And hello all you journey of discovery people. Thank you for joining me on my second vlog, on my second video blog, where I'm going to be talking about, discussing uh, the idea of the three brains. And as I do, and as I'm hoping to do uh, on a weekly basis, uh, to continue discussing what's up with Journey of Discovery, to continue talking about my explorations, my continued explorations of mindfulness. And in, the, in this exploration, in this continued discovery, I stumble upon numerous new ideas, um, insights. Perhaps I, I gain some, uh, an epiphany myself from my studies, from my explorations, from my meditations, from my self-reflections. And um, today's unique idea, or perhaps not unique for some of you, but when I stumbled upon it, uh, it was certainly something I never heard of before, is the idea that we all have three brains. So let's start from the beginning. Where does this idea come from? Well, I originally heard this idea by watching a video a number of months ago. I only watched once, but it kind of stuck with me ever since, and I've used it in numerous of my workshops and my talks, and I decided to create a video about this idea. And as I recall it, the Aborigines of Australia had this philosophy that we have three brains. The three brains being the first one that you're all familiar with, the one in our heads, the second one, the one in our hearts, and our third brain is our gut. So we have three brains. Now interestingly, this isn't all simply based on ancient myth or just a, a f philosophy or an ideology or a very specific culture, such as the Aborigines, as I've mentioned before, but there is some science to back this up. Interestingly, all of these particular areas have their own intrinsic nervous systems. They've got neurons, they've got the whole range of capabilities in order to do complex adaptive processes, and they take on information, process it, store it, change, and adapt. Basically, it can learn. And in doing so, it's a brain. All right, so let me, let me delve a little bit more into this concept, which I find fascinating. The idea is, as I understand it, and, I've, and as I've come to interpret it in my, own, in my own particular way, is that we all make decisions in our lives in this current state of affairs in the world we live in today using this brain. And I like to see this brain as the brain that is responsible for making our decisions in terms of what we need to do with our physical body. This brain is a brain that is associated and linked with love. Anytime an individual is asked, where do you feel the sensation of love, passion, peace? Nine times out of 10, people are gonna hold their heart and they're gonna to point towards their heart. This is where they feel that sensation. And where do you feel that instinctive, that, that moment of recognition that something is right? without consciously thinking about it. I mean, why do you think they call it a gut instinct? Because you feel it here in your gut. And all of these areas are associated with some sort of intelligence, some sort of recognition. So what I'm trying to propose here is that in making a decision, we need to try to incorporate all three of these brains. Where is the first place we tend to feel an instinctive reaction to want to do something, to want to help someone, to want to say something, it tends to come here in the gut. And I believe that's because in that moment we're connected with, with source, with higher self, with God, with the divine, whatever you wish to call it. And that instinctive feeling, that gut instinct, is sort of a message, is sort of some guidance, if you will. And then what we need to do is then filter it through the next brain, filter it through the heart. And the reason for that is that the heart is a, an organism, is a muscle, is a brain associated with nothing but love. So the moment we filter that instinctive desire through our heart, 
And then we can recognize if it's coming from a place of love or if it's coming from a place of fear. And once we've filtered it through the heart, we'll recognize if it's from a place of love. And if it is, then we can choose to move it up towards our brain. And the brain is simply there to tell our muscles what to do. The brain is simply there to tell us to move forward, to take the money out of our wallets to give it, or to move forward, to tell our mouths to say the beautiful words that we wish to say, to move forward and to do the thing that the instinctive feeling within us that's been filtered through our heart is telling us, yes, this is the right thing to do. And our brain's just there to tell our body what to do. Obviously, it's important to consider the fact that when we filter this instinctive feeling that we get within our gut into our heart, sometimes we will sense that it's not coming from a place of love and it may, it may feel like it's from a place of fear and then it, immediately you know that that's not the right decision to make because a lot of individuals, all of us, me included, make a lot of our decisions as a result of a fear or an insecurity that we have and that's the purpose of the brain or rather that's the purpose of this brain to ensure that we know where that particular feeling is coming from. So let me give you an example to best exemplify what it is I'm, I'm trying to describe here. So let's say for example you are visiting a country or you may even live in a country where there's a reasonable amount of poverty and you see people on the side of the street, on the side of the road, on the pavement, on the sidewalk who are homeless and who may require some sort of assistance, whether that's in the form of some kindness, some kind words, or even some money if you have any. And you'll be walking and perhaps you see them in your first gut instinct. You get this, this intuition that's just telling you, give this person the money that you have in your wallet. And you open your wallet and your first instinct is you look at it and you see this note and you start pulling it out and you go, well, wait a minute. And you go straight to the brain, the one up here in your head. And you think, oh goodness, I might need this money for dinner tonight. I mean, I know I'm not going to need the whole note, but I can't break it. I mean, I can't tear it in half and give it to him. So you, you're sitting there over-rationalizing. You're sitting there overthinking what the hell you should do. So as this is happening, you're still walking towards the person because you don't want to just stop in the middle of the pavement because that'll look weird, right? Again, your mind's telling you that'll look weird. You're worried about how you look. So you're still walking. So you're almost at the point where you've reached this individual. So you think, okay, hold on, hold on. Let me look for some note, you know, some coins rather. Perhaps I have some coins I could give this person. And by that stage, you've kind of reached them and you're looking through your wallet and you're going, oh goodness, I only have one really largish denomination in coins that I could give him. And then you're like, well, that kind of be embarrassing if I just give him one little coin. I mean, the guy probably needs a lot more than that. And this constant thinking, rationalizing, trying to logically understand what you should be doing, results in you having passed the guy. Now you're about five meters away from this person. By that stage, you're like, oh goodness, it's just gonna be embarrassing if I turn around and just give him one coin, ah, you know what, I'll just do it next time. And what's happened, you've completely skipped this brain right here, and you've gone straight to this brain right here. And you've ignored the gut instinct that told you just do it, and you've ignored this brain here that would have told you, yes, it's coming from a place of love, you mean nothing but goodness in doing this. And you've gone straight here, and in all of this thinking, worried about fear, what if I don't have enough money for dinner? Hell, you probably could have gotten, gone to the nearest ATM and withdrawn more. Perhaps you had some more in your hotel room if you were there on holiday. Entrusting our gut and filtering it through the heart so we know that where it's coming from, we can then just allow the brain in our head to tell our body what to do. And this is a process I'd like to encourage all of you to explore and to experiment with in your own day to day in order to see how this can help you live a truly authentic and connected life. So that is my challenge for you. Give it a try for the next week. Try to use the three brains in making decisions in your day to day. When you have those moments of instinct, those gut intuitive instinctive moments, go with it. Filter it through your, your, your brain and your chest. See how it feels, see where it's coming from. Once you've done that, Allow the brain in your head to just tell you what to do and just do it. And once you've done it, don't overthink it. You know where it came from. It came from a place of love. Nothing bad can come from that. Only goodness can come from goodness. So thank you for uh, listening and contemplating on this uh, fascinating idea that I'm exploring and I hope you choose to explore it too. And I'd like to end up today's video with some good news for the week.
And here it is. Good news for the week is that the country Turkey has basically announced that they will be set aside. They will be setting aside a huge ton of money to ensure that cancer treatments are free for the citizens of their country. Now this is huge. Besides the fact that cancer can be treated in numerous ways, besides the numer numerous pharmaceutical options that exist out there, I think this is a huge step forward for a government wanting to do what's right for the people, recognizing that the majority are who we need to cater to and not just the few at the top. And a government choosing to say, hey, we want to make sure that we can take care of our citizens, our citizens' health, especially with regards to an extremely dangerous health epidemic that exists in life today, in society today. Cancer is rife. And a government choosing to say, we're going to ensure that we are helping you to heal and we're not going to burden you with ridiculous financial costs that are associated with it, especially in the Western world today. I mean, health costs are insanely huge, ridiculous. Many people cannot survive because of the ridiculous costs that they are incurring, uh, having to pay for medical costs and pharmaceuticals. So a government choosing to say this, I think is huge and it's great news. And I'm hoping that more countries in the world, specifically countries in the West, that need to take, take the forward leap in saying, we're going to do the same. We want to ensure that we can benefit our citizens. So I'm hoping that news like this will continue to spread throughout the world and that more governments are going to start saying, we want to pump things back. We want to pump more money. We want to pump more benefits back to the people because everyone benefits, not just the few, even the few, the few and the many. So that's my good news for today. Turkey has basically passed legislation that would guarantee a great deal more money being pumped into cancer treatment for individuals and citizens of their country. All right, that's the good news for today. Thank you for listening. If you have any other ideas, if you have any comments, please feel free to comment down below. And uh, yeah, I look forward to some new ideas, concepts, revelations, new ways of thinking, new knowledge that I'll share with you in the next video. Till then, namaste.